Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 33. And welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson and I'm with Julian Pombo. Hello. How's it going today? Yeah, things are fine. You know, just the just the usual. Uh I think in one of the last episodes I was really excited about computer arriving and stuff, and uh, it's it's here. Yep. And life life has changed. Let's see. Things it. Are can, can you? Can, are you in a position to move your your? Yeah, I can. I can just give us a wee wee hot minute. Cause I've got, a, I've got a proper pro set up now. You know, I've got a, I've got a tripod. I've got everything set up. So Ooh. that's the that's the computer there. So that's the because I'm a total nerd. I I got one with a tempered glass, like panel, so I can just have a look at all the innards. So oh yeah, none of your plastic cooler, rubbish. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a proper metal yep. metal thing, and shiny, some nice RGB. I know, right? And check this out. Uh, give me, give me a minute. I can, I can go through different colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I like yes. that. Ooh, the rainbow. It effect. is quite fun. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and then there's like a bunch of like different sort of like breathing ones and whatever. But at the moment, I've just got it on a nice static pink. Nice. Because yeah, it's, it's quite soft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not you know I I hate the I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of like the like it's just distracting. Mm. Uh, and the case like the inside does have like. Uh, LEDs and stuff, but uh, I had to turn them off just because I was recording some music, and I think the the extra LEDs were like getting picked up by the um, guitar pickups. Really? So, uh, just any any time I was recording, you would just hear like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just um, horrible, horrible, <clears throat> crackly, poppy kind of interference kind of sound. So I kind of have to like. Turn away while I'm playing. That's the joy of anything single pick coil pickups. It. Yeah, well, no, it's even my humbuckers. even my humbuckers as oh. well. I'm like, yeah, it's just anything. Um, it just picks it up. But it was it was worse when all the internal lights were on. Yeah. But so today, <sighs> this is part five of our instrumental series, and mm. we were going to do this, then we mm. weren't, and then we were again, and. <laughs> People don't think of vocals as an instrument, but it kind of is. So, I thought, who are we going to get for a for a for a, pe- a person who's an expert on vocals? And I, I was racking my brains, and then remembered that I live with a vocalist, who's also um, <laughs> your sister. So, I'd like to introduce Agustina yes. Pombo. Hi. Who is an expert <laughs> vocalist? Oh, um, okay. Studies Thank you. studies uh, in the the it's the Bemus B- music. Bemus course at Glasgow University yeah. um, so mm. she knows what she's talking about um, so yeah mm. this episode is going to be about vocals and how to think about vocals and just uh, just every sort of, mm. the, the same sort of stuff we've been covering with all the other instruments um, but this one is going to be different because the instrument is part of you it's not like you can yeah. buy another instrument mm. it's not an <laughs> You can't see it. Yeah. It's internal. <laughs> let, me go, let me go vocal cord shopping. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Imagine. So <laughs> we'll start we'll start uh, the kind of the same along the same lines as what we have done for the last four episodes mm. on finding so uh, the last four episodes it was like finding the right keyboard or finding the right guitar or finding the right bass. In this case you mm. can't really do that if you're the singer, but you can find the right type of music. So that's mm. probably the most important part before you even start singing in a band is actually finding the right band. Mm. So yeah. find a band or start a band that is built around your voice and not the other way around mm. because you can't shop around for the right sounding voice, but you can shop around for the right sounding band. The, the reason this is such a 
crucial thing is because if you are singing a style that you are not comfortable with in a band, you'll do damage to your voice. Yeah. As right. you'll probably well, that, agree with. Yes, yeah. you can. Um, so, like, uh, if you were... Uh, we have actually found... Sorry, I was going to... Uh, just... Uh, uh, internet recording of an episode over the internet. It's a nightmare, because I, I just appear as if I'm rude. Uh, no, I was just going to say, like, that <coughs> is that is 100% true. Like, um, even... I'm, I'm just thinking about the wedding band. Like, we've changed some of our set list just because our singer sounds like 10 times better on certain kinds of songs than, than other ones. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, for sure. You have to find your sound thing. as well. So, mm. how, so, so if you, I, and like our singer, <coughs> n- yeah, our singer really knows her sound really well. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. Um, that was good. So if you're, if you've just come out of education and You've never sang in a band before, sung in a band before, and you, how do you know what style will suit you? Do you, is it a case of just whatever you like and have done um, becomes what you sing in a band? Well, for me, I've always been introduced to, well, I was introduced to classical music first. Um, you know, I was part of choirs mm-hmm. from a young age. I've always been interested in singing and engaged with singing, but um, basically when I started studying voice when I was 15 like properly training my voice to do you know all the things that we're going to talk about um it was always you know just classical stuff you know all the stuff like the baroque music romantic music modern classical music you, you, there's a lot of different things that go towards those styles because classical music isn't just one thing there are many styles and there are certain styles I suit better in that group right. for me I really like singing a lot of quite agile music in in classical music, like Baroque music, very yeah. flowery, because my voice can do that. Whereas, like, I, I know people, I have friends who their voice voices suit very kind of rich, deep, romantic music where they can really lean into the notes and they're not as strong, you know, doing all the flowery stuff. I would say I can kind of spread on both. I've, I've got a, quite a big voice, but it can also be pulled back in to do kind of early, earlier styles of music. So, so you're, mm. you, you leave all that vocal training and you would be in a musical project that you are best suited, you know, based on your education rather than coming out and going and joining a post-punk band and trying to... Yeah, you kind of use like, okay, what what have I done in the past? What does my voice already do? What can I apply to, you know, different styles of music? So with my voice, because I can do very lyrical stuff, I quite like lyrical music and I have quite a high set voice, so I prefer to sing music that's in higher keys Mm. because that's where my strongest point point is. Mm -hmm. That's where I can really just relax and open open up the sound but if I try and sing something that's too low for me it it won't do anything for my voice and it won't do anything for the song it kind of just makes it a bit dull and flat so you have to find what your voice really feels comfortable with so you take away all the Mm -hmm. little things you have done and say okay this that this that I can do that (coughs) towards this Mm. so what if you um if you really like a style of music mm-hmm. and you just can't sing it, should you try and force yourself to do that? And if not, why and what damage can you do? Well, it depends on obviously the style. If there's, you know, I quite like heavy, heavy metal music and like screaming and stuff, but I can't, I can't do it. My right. voice is not capable and I wouldn't try and force it because I, I like the way I sing already. Uh-huh. So I would... If anything, I would just change the style of the music of the songs I like if I was yeah. going to do them. I mean, but it, it depends on the person. Yeah. You can train your voice and to do different things. It depends if you're really wanting to and finding all the right ways to do it, the healthy ways to do it, and not just saying, "Oh, it must be like this," and then going for something and realizing that you've been doing it wrong and then hurting yourself. Well, so. Yeah, I mean, what I was thinking there when you were when you were talking was just like, I suppose that 
the first thing you need to find out is just what you were saying is find out what your voice can and can't do. Mm -hmm. But then I suppose with like, I, with like styles of music, I would be willing to just, I don't know, just try it. Try it with your voice. Don't force your voice to do anything. Just try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, you like know, just you try it using all the stuff you've learned. You know? Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Cause that, yeah, because that's, that's how symphonic metal started, is that <laughs> they were like, how about opera? Yeah. But metal. Yeah, I quite like that. You, yeah. know, you know, I like all the lyrical your, side of do metal. Do yourself so, a favour right now, and all of you, stop what you're doing. Stop watching this video and type in Christopher Lee, metal vocalist. And <laughs> you, you can see <laughs> this amazing Christopher Lee in his 90s singing in a metal band. Yes, that's a thing. Oh, uh, it's brilliant. Amazing. Um, so... Mm -hmm. I've heard plenty of singers um, who have done a certain thing over many years try to force their voice to do something and ended up damaging it. Um, I can think of one example. Yeah. Uh, the lead singer from Dream Theater um, right. back in the early 90s joined the band and was very kind of um, influenced by like Rush um, sort of prog stuff yeah really Katie high stuff, high yeah. singing and was really really good at it and yeah really really good he was he, i don't think he was trained but he, he managed to get those notes fairly comfortably mm -hmm. and and he did it in a way that didn't hurt his voice but around about the second album there was they, they forced him to change his technique to become gritty and do that sort of <coughs> behind all the notes you know that that sort of that shouty John the, Lennon the, sound. The, that, the, the, the kind of like distortion kind of, yeah, yeah. distorted kind so, of sound. So, I mean, the stuff that was in the in yeah. the charts around about then was like Nirvana and and he was like Some people just really notorious for, for yeah. gritty vocals. Mm. And I think that that pressure on him, he, if you listen to the second Dream Theater album in 93, his entire vocal sound changed. And see, by 19... 99 2002 you could tell like audibly uh, the, mm. the, the vocal performance just started to go yeah. down and now like his voice is and it's just shredded to bits um just from yeah. years of doing bad technique uh-huh whereas geddy lee is like he's like kind of infamous for like well not infamous but like he is just really well known for just taking like extreme care yeah of his voice yeah like it um his his vocal uh routine is <clears throat> it's really it's really fascinating yeah um like there's just certain foods that he just and drinks and things like that that he just does not touch yeah at all yeah um because he just knows it's gonna affect his voice so yeah um it's really really fascinating but yeah when you started telling me that you started singing high i was just like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but because that's already i think a lot of people were trying to do that kind of thing you know uh, geddy lee started singing really high and everyone's like i want to start singing really high and then yeah. but they were doing it wrong yeah you know and uh, it's kind of the same and um uh with like you know metalcore bands and stuff like that none like a lot of the guys don't don't know how to scream how to growl properly mm. so a lot of them would literally scream mm -hmm. and <laughs> screaming over long periods of time is not good for your throat definitely not um even talking uh, for long periods yeah, of time horror stories of yep. like yeah um there's a really cool docu it's like a it's like a 20 minute long like video by vice or something like that <clears> but it's basically like one of the top like um like scream like metal like vocal trainers is a uh what do you call it uh an opera teacher she like teaches opera singing mm. um and that's what her training was in she's like s sung at the met and stuff like that that's uh cool. and uh yeah and now she just trains uh metal vocalists on how to scream properly mm -hmm. so uh it's really interesting she Check it out. Yeah, I don't can't remember the exact name of the video, but um, um, if it if it hurts you, it's probably bad. Oh, definitely. Like, yeah, I mean, and and uh, that just goes with everything, you know. Yeah, yeah back to all the other, 
episodes that we did, you know, if having your toms really high up yeah. mm-hmm. and playing like this hurts, then you should probably stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it singing. seems really obvious, but it's 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 actually not. There's yeah. it's amazing how many people just come off of a gig and they've lost their voice. They're like, Oh yeah, like I can't speak. Um if you're if you are like that after yeah. a gig, you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah. Um yeah. have you ever came come off a gig and over a performance and your voice feels weird? No. Because you're doing it right. I've um I've, I've sung I guess well I've sung for long periods of time and I've always been fine. fine. You'll um, get tired, but that, mm. tired that's, that's being different. tired is fine. Obviously, I'm tired after it's a gig like, as well. But. Even in a singing lesson, like when I would have my singing lessons, I would never feel sore. I would always just feel, oh, that was a workout, but never, yep. never strained, never dying to drink something or like talking in hushed tones. I would never have that problem. So. Which obviously means I have been doing it right and mm. listening to my teachers. Partly as well, I've always naturally sung, I think. I've always kind of known what to do. I've always listened to my body because it's something that I've always found easy. It's, it's a part of me. It's never, it wasn't something that I was like, all of a sudden, I'm going to do singing. I, I've always, always done it. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. we'll move on to, so you've, you found the, you found the band or you've made the band that mm-hmm. suits your voice yeah. because the the song the songs should be written to accommodate the range and the style of the vocalist and yeah. not the other way around like uh, i've mm-hmm. heard i've heard instances of uh, bands writing songs and then t- trying to find a singer to fit and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't mm-hmm. because you you yeah. you're better just to work with the vocalist while you're writing yeah definitely it's not like um hiring in a uh guitarist or something just to play chords or play a lead anyone can do that um so we'll move on to a uh, vocal exercise improvement and maintenance mm-hmm. mm. so i don't know anything about this i've just put down th- things and you can talk us through okay all the different things so the first one i've got written down is uh breathing yeah. uh while you're singing i'm, I'm assuming yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I, I think the, f- the first thing you should always do before you even sing anything is make sure you are completely relaxed. There should be no tension anywhere. Yeah. Um, I've had problems before with with always having one place in my body having tension and it's my hand. I would kind of curl up my hand <laughs> and sing totally fine. It would always sound fine, yeah. but I, th- you're, you're supposed to make sure that there's no tension anywhere because that small amount of attention to it can completely change the sound and how you feel so yeah the first thing to do is always you know relax your whole body stand up with good posture and not your legs should be not too far apart but not too close together everything's just you know as if you were just standing looking at something you shouldn't be thinking about it too hard but also you know having a strong core you still want to be balanced and breathing so, is important. So yeah. holding the microphone up like that and go and, and oh, it's, oh, it's the worst thing when I watch people singing like that. Even talking like that is the worst mm. thing. Um, it strains yeah. everything the wrong way. And like, uh, doing this is Liam equally Gallagher. as bad. Just saying, you should never dip your chin in either because just where your head sits naturally, you, you can move it about. That's totally obviously allowed. But you shouldn't over move mm. either. Like it's all about finding balance, yeah. as with everything in life. Well, but yeah. What What about like choreography and stuff? Because um, um, you can train yourself to do it. I think again, choreography. That's it depends on what you're singing and the choreography itself. Yeah. You know, if you're walking around the stage and you're singing, that's fine because you've you're mm-hmm. still feeling natural. I've done it before for exercises. You know, I'll walk around and I'll I'll sing. And it's very relaxed. But if I was trying to like jump up and down and do all this stuff, I wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't be my best work. It wouldn't, it's, you'd have to <laughs> <I've> be tried. <laughs> extremely fit to do it as well, yeah. you know, because singing is, yeah. is a well, fitness that's the thing. almost. I, yeah. So I tried to sing like a scale, like jumping up and down <laughs> and doing <laughs> stuff. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> It's, yeah, I just couldn't do it. That's why we use your core. Your core is going I, all over the well, place. Well, that's the thing. A, a lot of the times, I'm like watching, like I don't know, like Beyonce. You know, like 
tour tour videos of like I don't know Justin Bieber tour or something, or like it'll just come up and I'm like, how is he? Able to he's, do that. He's miming. And it depends sing. on the, the tune miming. as it's well. If if the tune's not very difficult, you can do that. But if the tune is going all over the place, yeah. they're, they're, they'll most likely stop doing the choreography uh, for those yeah. bits and then keep dancing again. That I've kind of analysed some videos like that. So and I know that um, what you call it. Um, for I'm really sorry for any Ariana Grande fans, but she mimes her really high notes. Oh, does she? Yeah. Uh, on tour. To be honest, if, yeah, if she's she on can, tour, like because she can't, she can sing. She can sing them. Oh, but I know. Like, I know um, she can. Like the really like high, almost like whistle notey kind of notes. She just doesn't doing that all the time. Wouldn't be. Gr- I can't sing a whistle note. I have a very high voice, and I c- I've never done. I've never done that. I can't. I don't know. First like of all, the, how to the do the it. Mariah Carey. Like. Yeah, I've never. <laughs> I've I've never actually tried to do it cool. because I don't know. What is hmm. what it is that they're doing? What they you know? What they have now is it likes a Beyonce when she's doing all her crazy dance stuff. Mm. Um, they mm-hmm. have a machine. They have a, like a plug-in algorithm thing that detects um, if she's singing out of tune, and it will automatically fade out her live vocals and then fade in pre-recorded vocals on top of the backing track. So as soon as she falls out of tune, it brings in a pre-recorded thing. Plus, for mm-hmm. heavy dance routines, chances are she'll not she'll be miming mm-hmm. uh, on those particular bits um, because would... because her mm. voice will be strained. Oh, of course, they I... also have live yeah. pitch correction as well. So yeah, you so, told me about some, that. Some, yeah, I knew about that. Yeah. So you can't Which really sing. They have a pre pre um, made. So the key the key of the song is in D. Mm-hmm. So every note you sing will be rounded up to the nearest note in the scale. Right. So you can be out of tune by a tone, but it's still in the tune of the song. So um, it, you can't you mm. can't be out of tune. Oh, my God. Um, and it doesn't sound like right. it's auto-tune, like it's like Cher. It's, 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 it glides up <laughs> and down. And you can never tell the difference. Mm. No, um, I was going to cool. say, like, with, with that, though, for me, I would rather they just were into the music i don't mind the show the show is fun but when it's the singer i would rather they had dancers and they were just giving well, it their best because that's what i would go there for you look at like personally. really old videos of like freddie mercury singing live mm. and he's dancing about the yeah. stage and he's not he's not perfectly in tune he's no. like he's like really raw and like no. it sounds really jarring nowadays because all you hear is like perfect vocals all the time but when you mm. listen to the old stuff it's like <laughs> they were they were they were yeah. really like well, they were real. They were real. It was and something I like more that. real about it. Yeah. Um, so you're saying when you're jumping about stage, mm. it's quite hard to keep yourself centred. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're jumping about the stage. But you've got to do it to the best of your ability because the, the most important part is the stuff coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Because if, like, if you're jumping yeah. about, you look cool, but it sounds the, terrible. It's not really... The most I've ever had to do was um, <laughs> I did this sort of this small thing and I was singing and I had to move around the stage a little bit but I wasn't jumping around and dancing but you know if you're moving and it and plus the nerves get to you it can really really do a lot because you have to with singing mm. because it's inside everything you feel will come out in your voice no matter what so you have to be really strong so if you if you get nervous and you're moving around the stage you have to hold that core to keep the sound really level it's mm. it's you have to be like an athlete almost you know because yeah. it's it's so physical yep. like more than people realize yeah. obviously every instrument is like the violin definitely is it's a very physical instrument and i, I don't know man I, I i don't know about bass it's like the least <laughs> physical instrument ever i just i just do this <laughs> like it, it's my it's the reason why I look the way I look at the moment because <laughs> I can I can eat and play at the same time. It's it's yeah, a, it's a curse I can't do that. and a blessing at the same time. I can't do that with any of my instruments. Yeah, drummer, really drummers have it worse because they have to arrive first, set up all their gear. Mm. They they have the hardest physical yeah. workout, and then they always leave last. Yeah, and no one ever true. helps them. <laughs> Sad times. And they have to pay for expensive vans. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's the thing. But you know, I I I do sympathise with the, uh, you know, because I played a flute which kind of has s- similar mechanics mm-hmm. to 
uh, singing oh, and yeah. that there's a lot of like diaphragm core control that you need to have and um you know though that that kind of thing mm. you know obviously i'm not singing but i am using a lot of my breath and lung well yeah you're using and, and a lot that. of a, a lot of similar things you know especially with like yeah, the diaphragm yeah. and the using, breathing uh, all that i'm using about 75 percent of what you're needing to do as a singer, basically. Yeah, so pretty I, much. I do, I do get where you're coming from. Because, again, so, thinking about it yeah. really counts. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, so, uh, what are some things that... Um, so, like, I, I, I'm, I'm in no way a singer. I do backing vocals. Right. But I've been thinking about getting my vocals just sounding a little bit better. What are some things that I can do some... Uh, exercises like um, any books, any te- well, technique books I, I should look at. I could just tell you some stuff literally right now. Like I've started teaching. Um, I have a, I've got a pupil, and she's you know it's interesting because um, she's an alto. She's you, you know she's got quite a rich, deeper voice, and mm. it's interesting teaching someone like that because um, it's something I don't have. I don't have. I don't have experience in singing in that register. However, everything I do can be mm. applied. So what I would say is when you're, you know, trying to like warm up, warming up is especially important. So what you should do is find the middle of your voice and sing through the vowels and create a nice smooth line. You know, the main thing is keeping the line as clean as possible while you change the vowels. There's no cuts. And then the more you learn yeah. to do that, the more you can apply it to words and, and, and lyrics and songs, you know? And then that's how yeah. phrasing really happens. And that's what you really cool. want to do, especially for backing vocals. You want to be really smooth and really strong. So I would definitely recommend doing that. And from the middle, work your, your voice up. And then from the middle, work it down, you know, kind of, but not too high and not too low. Just kind of be gentle. And then as, as you start to warm up, go even higher and go even lower you, you should never try and do like from the middle right to the, the top you should warm it up gently a couple of different bell sounds and something I do is kind of like movements like kind of thing that's really good because you know you create that line again and you're changing vowels faster and then you can do you know right uh, runs and, and fires like ah kind of thing i've not warmed yeah, up just yeah, now yeah, yeah. but those are really good for you know just opening up the voice slowly um creating that line changing vowels again and it just it opens up all the different sounds and the engagement in your mouth so the vowels should never be at the front of your mouth too much it's mostly about the inside and warming up your face is the most important thing you know like keeping the eyes nice and bright adding motion even to the exercises you know open and happy keeping the nostrils kind of open there's so many little details that go into the warming up exercises before you even sing a piece and then once you've keep doing that it becomes part of your routine and then it becomes you know like second nature and when you start singing a song you will apply all those things without even having to think twice about it so right gotcha so okay. that's what i would start with you know warming up yeah doing those kind of what about, things so one of the, so one of the things that i've been thinking about just in just passively mm-hmm. with regarding my vocals yep. so there's 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 two things yes uh, actually no this one i've not really been thinking well i, I thought of there like what if you if what if you don't really know your own range? So, like, I didn't actually find out my range properly. Mm-hmm. I didn't really settle into it properly until I was actually in, like, fifth year. Yeah, well... Sixth year, so, like, 17. Your voice doesn't uh, mature and, for a while, so... Well, that's the thing, because I when, when I was, like, 14, I started out as a bass, and I yeah. was, like, singing, like... I could sing really low. Yeah. Uh, which is funny. And then the older I got, I just... I've completely lost those low notes. I can barely hit in like a low A. Well, yeah, it's like, because mm, obviously you were oh, going through a time in your life where you were... Yeah. You know, your voice was kind of going, what am I doing? What's going on? Yeah. Especially with, with guys. They have that... Girls don't have it as as dramatically happen. Mm. But if anything, girls usually tend to start to get lower voices. 
mm. if, occasionally. Um, my voice has always been high resting. I still struggle to. I can occasionally hit an A below middle C, A flat, G at push. Mm. The the most yeah. I managed to get once was an E, but that's because I wasn't very well. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well that's the thing. When I when I'm sick, I can get to like. Yeah, you know, low well, D's and low C's, I've which is funny. I've not actually looked but, into why that happens, but I'm just guessing when you feel unwell, everything kind of just drops and becomes a bit sluggish, and then it does. It must affect yeah. something in what, there. But so, uh, is there a way? So, like uh, now that I've um, I'm 25 now, mm -hmm. so t 10 years have passed yes. since my I I decided to become a tenor. Yes. Um, just I don't know. I was like, well, I can't sing low notes anymore, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm now kind of stuck in like a two octave kind of range, okay. roughly. Is there anything I can do to extend my range? Well, I'm currently trying to do that because my range isn't that as big either. It's about two octaves, maybe just over. It's like middle C to uh, top C. Oh my God, are we like related or something? Oh my like, God, We have like the same range. Uh, I know, oh my I God. know. And we're both like high speakers. <laughs> um, with my voice, yeah. like I'm currently, I was talking to my singing teacher about this the other day because I wanted to know her thoughts. And she said, there are ways of, you know, trying to train your voice to get lower. But the thing is my voice as I'm getting older is just getting higher. Yeah, <laughs> that's secret, just the way my dark hearts. <laughs> but with with her, she was saying the one thing she's observed about me is observing your speaking voice. Where did your speaking voice rest? Yeah. that's where your middle voice is. You know, you can hear mine. I'm like mm. la 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 la. Yeah, I'm like actually there. that. So that's reminded me of something. So I do this with like kids mm -hmm. who um who I'm like doing some like ear training stuff yep. and they've never sung before so i'm like let's just find where you're at yep. so then i can just do the ear training and singing back in that range so a really good way to do that is count backwards from 20 in like the most monotone relaxed voice that oh, you can find and then cool try and find the note on the piano or guitar or whatever so like for me it would be like 20 uh, <clears throat> 20 19 18 17 mm. 16 14, 13, 20, 21, 22, 23, right. 24, 25. So I'm actually, my middle voice is at a low C. Yeah, so you're, uh, right, you're uh, right in the, between. The C below middle C, right? right? So I'm like, ba, 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 that's my lowest note that right. I can hit. Right. But then, I'm so I roughly like, about that, I think. Like, when I'm speaking, it's like, the, yeah. When I'm speaking, yeah, yeah, so, so we, oh my god, we're just like twins. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny. Oh. Um, so but I wonder if I that. pitch shift your voice down an octave, you would sound like Julian. I wonder. I wonder if I, I'll pitch shift your voice oh. up an octave and see if you sound like Agostino. <laughs> hey, hey, that'd be hey, interesting, what, in, actually. In, in post. Yeah. That, um, that would be funny. Let's do a little test right now, actually. So you just speak for a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, but basically what you're saying is, well, you find your resting voice and work from there. So my middle C is where I can sing quite richly, but my middle voice is the strongest between like G and A, between C, okay. middle C and uh, the C above it. That's where I, I feel, you know, really powerful and open on the lower part. But then once I start to go really high, my voice is a different, again, a different sound in timbre. So it's mm. like, it's like, boom, like new world. Like you go from a room through a little sort of ladder up to another room and it's like whoa because yeah. um, it's like when people talk about the passaggio area of your voice and it's different for different voices mine sits mm. between e flat e and f what's and, a pistachio but you mean <laughs> <laughs> pistachio <laughs> What's up, pistachio? I like pistachios. Um, <coughs> pistachio part, um, is an Italian word for like the passing area sort of thing. Like where your voice transitions from middle into head. Or you could, I don't know if they use it as much for middle into chest voice, but I don't really have a, a very deep chest voice. It's like three notes. But um, basically Same. it's where your voice goes from sounding one way and when you start to sing up and there's this part where your voice will sound weaker because it's it's trying to go into a different part so 
a lot of people have to work on the passaggio area the passaggio, to make it really strong. The thing that yodelers do, they break in and out of it all the time. That's what creates that sound. Uh, I don't think so because, well, maybe. I, I think so. They're they're breaking from one voice into one to another. The other. Yeah. yeah, the passaggio isn't that, though. I wouldn't call that the passaggio. The passaggio is a specific point where your voice is changing. Where Whereas, you can't sing any higher on a certain sound. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, for mm. me, I've always... Uh, even my my teachers have said I've always naturally been able to change. You know, I'll sing a note, and as I start to get higher, I just naturally know how to modify my face and right. the sound. Um, I've worked on it obviously as well because you know there, you can always make it stronger. So basically, mm. what we're saying after all this, summing all this up, the mm. best advice for vocalists is to buy a keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, buy I a would keyboard say, and learn, figure out and learn, map your vocals learn to some actual keyboards, just very simple stuff. Yeah. Well, I've I learned. I'm just piano I'm first. just saying I'm just saying so, so that you can actually scale and map your voice yeah. exactly. to physical notes. Write them down mm -hmm. and say yeah. my passaggio is between these two notes yep. and my lowest notes here, my highest notes here. So you've got it mapped out. Are, the reason being you can send this to songwriters and mm -hmm. say this is my range write a song for me in this range yeah this is where I prefer to be however if you want to be dramatic you can go here and here Like I've only yeah. met like two vocalists who know this who know actually where their notes and range, range is um, I think it's it's, yeah. really, it's really important like my, my teacher um, before as well she when I was talking to her she noticed when I sing I really map out what I'm singing I don't just do it on a whim she she said because I play piano, she can see that I can think about what I'm doing specifically. I can see the scale in my head before I even sing it. Yeah. So when she says do this run, mm. I can feel it because I almost feel it through my fingers. I'm like da -da 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 -da. you're picturing on a piano exactly, and then I can create a piano sound almost. It's like I sound quite. Not robotic, but I can I can go into autopilot and be like boom 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 Rather kind than of going thing. Boom. Yeah, and and the the, the mm. challenge is going. You're fretted. Boom. You're the fretted vocalist. You're no, not, no, you you want to be fretless vocalist. you want to be fretless, <laughs> but you want to be fretless with um, precision. Yes, you don't you don't want to be sloppy. So for me, it's yeah. good that I am actually quite precise, and I've worked on making it smooth. Because that's actually easier, mm. I think, to do than trying to do something the opposite way and be like, right, but it can be done. It's just about mm. putting in that work. So, so yeah. uh, a question is that I think this is the most important question that mm. people are actually wondering about. Uh, yep. Drinking. Drinking. Okay. With drinking, yeah. um, I would. Re what, what, what alcohols are good? <laughs> for drink because it is alcohol well, that's the problem isn't it alcohol is it can be really yeah uh, just drinking the best thing you can do for your voice is drink things that are lukewarm yeah okay okay right so, so drinking really cold stuff isn't always great but it's not bad for you in the long term it's more yeah. of a case if you're oh, gonna lukewarm but, water well, if you're you in can, the middle you can of drink singing hot water a gig and you have a big glass of cold water during a gig that just shuts all your vocal cords down doesn't it yeah like yeah. It, it can really affect your voice and you know when if you're especially going to perform there are a lot of things that you can take into account before that like the day even the night before mm. drinking lots of water that night you know keeping your voice as lubricated as possible you know like have some honey um yeah so not a pint so, of lager no you want to drink soft things eat eat things that are soft that aren't going to make you cough or or do anything that could strain your voice i've heard dairy is a bad thing to eat before a gig it makes you sticky it's very um it makes you have a lot of build up of mucus basically that's why you lovely. don't lovely you don't you don't want stuff like that to happen that's why you're supposed to avoid like chocolate and having like yogurts and stuff um because, on the day of a gig fair enough but it's only the only time i would recommend right. having dairy is if you've got a sore throat because it can kind of soothe it because it'll mm. kind of cover so, it but yeah uh -huh. If we're thinking about like long term, because I know, long term, yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, because I, uh, going back to Geddy Lee again, because mm -hmm. he, um, the only, al the only alcoholic drink that he drinks, I think it's, I don't know if it's red wine mm -hmm. or white wine. I can't remember which one's better right. in the long term for your for your for your vocals. Probably but red. 
Let's say I you're married. like, I don't, I don't fancy going straight edge. You know, I, I, I like, I like drinking. I like alcohol. Mm -hmm. What alcohol is actually like okay for for me to drink in the long run that isn't going to totally mess up my my vocal cords. Well, I'm first of all not a really big drinker. I like to have a drink when I do, um, mostly mm. as I've what I've tended to go towards for over like you know the past while is basically been I like rosé wine the best. I like that middle ground for red and okay. and white. So are are like so wines are generally okay. Uh, well, from what I've seen, like you know when I've my singing teacher, I've seen her. She's she's had a drink. Before. like that's uh, it's allowed it's not you know completely yeah, yeah, yeah. against I, the I, rules I, yeah. but it's just, just all to about, become an alcoholic it's more about yeah. the moderation of it as well you yeah. know yeah. if you want to have you know a little bit of gin one day it's fine as long as you're not drinking like six gins that night and then you know some beer and then like doing it every weekend yeah. if you want to have a mm. gin as a treat you know like a nice elderflower one something tasty fine the thing the thing about but, the drinking thing it's um, if you're doing it excessively, it doesn't matter what you're drinking. It's the it's if you drink too much and you throw up, that will it's do well, damage. The after because effects there of have it. been vocalists who have had like food poisoning or things like that and have actually ruptured the vocal cords from yes. from vomiting. It can really um, yeah. do some and you can avoid bad stuff. if you can avoid um, being stupid. Right. Do it. <laughs> it's all yeah. It's all right, about moderation. So don't drink to excess. Ha okay. You can have a wee that's drink. Very, that sounds sensible. Basically, the most you should ever get, I think, is a teeny bit tipsy, but never to the point that you'll ever feel mm. sick. I w I've, I've, no, yeah, that's not really happened. So, so like th right. things like um, if you are a vo vocalist in a, a band, and you are also a, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a teacher. Mm -hmm. Who spends their entire day shouting at kids? Is that is that a bad thing? Over speaking can be really bad. Like even when I speak a lot, I get tired, and the best thing to do is constantly drink. Like right now, I wish I had a glass of water because when I talk for a, a long time, I get really dried out. Because yeah. mm. when I sing, I actually find it less tiring. Depending of again, it's all about warming up. So when even when you're going to speak, it's a good idea just to. Speak gently, but not too soft either, because whispering can be straining. So it's finding the right, middle, okay. the middle ground of where you speak, how loudly, mm. keeping it relaxed. You know, basically yeah. everything has to be chill vibes all the time. <laughs> what about right. what about okay. um, cigarette smoking? Oh, that's, I just want to. Yeah. I'll just have, have some have some cigarettes just to get that growl. Yeah, like, but but, oh, but, 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 you... but weed's okay, right? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know. If that's the, same, the thing. Weeds so. isn't cigarettes. I, I wouldn't know because <laughs> I, I haven't done it. So, know. with with <laughs> cigarettes, the thing about it is it makes you cough, and coughing is a really yeah. bad thing. Like, see, even when I'm ill and I have a bad cough, I try yeah. and avoid coughing as much as possible because that I, already adds damage. And it also kind of clogs up your lungs, which you kind of need. Well, yeah, to, that can happen to sing, too because you need air to produce sound that's right well i remember someone you know. telling me about somebody who had had a really bad cough and they kept coughing and coughing and clearing their throat to the point that they had damaged it so much that they needed to take some special stuff because they kept choking because they'd over coughed that and that sort of stuff mm. freaks me out so i'm like if you can avoid coughing avoid it as much as possible mm. try and swallow it down drink stuff if if you really need to, you can have the occasional cough, but really try and limit it, and basically don't do anything that's going to attack your voice. Nothing should ever feel like it's coming from here, especially and it's, well, mm. with singing. It should always feel like stuff comes from. Well, you can't see where I'm pointing, but down here, and then coming up through here, floating out. Even when you're singing really powerfully and strong, it should be like ah from here, not. Uh, yeah. To hear the difference in so yeah. pro projections a big thing because massive when you're massive if you're in a band and you're trying to compete above a drum kit mm. and you can't project, you got some problems because mm. when you turn up to a live gig and you're standing in front of a drum kit and the microphone is boosted all the way up and you just get feedback, it's probably because you're not singing loud enough. Mm. And s singing singing louder doesn't necessarily mean 
uh, singing louder in the sense of just just talking louder or shouting because that can be worse. But there are techniques that you can learn to make your vocals louder without damaging your voice. Yeah, definitely. And if you yeah. want to find out what those techniques are, you should get a vocal teacher. Um, yes. Like I Agostina, who is a vocal instructor teacher. <laughs> she has yeah. uh, her own YouTube channel as well, um, demonstrating her skills. And she will do uh, Zoom online lessons as well. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm I will. If, if, if no, if people if people are interested, definitely. Like, I would be happy to give some guidance, some tips. Yep. You know, um, with the voice as well is something I was talking about with my people the other day. Something that's really good about her is that she doesn't really get too nervous. Nerves are a massive mm. thing. If you're nervous, you can start <laughs> doing all the wrong things with your voice. So it's all about being like, you know, I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter. You know, it's fine, and just. Let it relax and let it project naturally. Some It's like um, a lot of people try and fix breathiness. Breathiness is because, you again, it's a projection thing. It's finding not to, like, <sighs> you don't want to sing up through your, like, soft palate out your mouth in a weird way. Some people sing through their nose. That's totally fine. That is a way of singing. I would say I kind of do a mostly out of my, the back of my throat to my nose a little bit. But mm. all these things, it's different for everybody. It's finding out everything about the person and seeing what you should apply to them because everybody is unique. Their voices are unique. You can find similarities between people, but there's always going to be mm -hmm. differences. So there are always going to be differences. So, so moving on. So the next section, uh, once you've, you know, done your vocal exercises you've found the band that you want to be in you've mm -hmm. you've kind of found your voice you know what you want to sound like you know how to look after yourself you now need to put it to practice in the band so right. mm. um something i always see um just been playing in bands for uh, longer than i care to mention um <clears throat> in rehearsals yeah. the um <clears throat> biggest mistake i always see um bands doing is they come into the rehearsal studio, the drummer is setting up his cymbals, mm -hmm. the guitarist is uh, getting ready to turn his martial amp up to 11 um, and annoy everyone with uh, tapping solos. And the, the vocalist is kind of just um, standing about, you know, got their lyric sheets, they maybe go up to the mic, one, two, one, two, okay, that's it, it's working. And then, <laughs> then they just start with the first song. Big mistake. You should always start the session off once everything's set up and good to go get the vocalist up to the mic if maybe if some one of you in the band is you know good at sound go up to the desk and get the vocals sound checked first in rehearsal this is so important mm -hmm. if you have a bad if you don't have a sound check in your rehearsal your whole rehearsal will be sabotaged so get the vocals sounding good before you start and it's important to make sure that the microphone is pointing at your face directly into your mouth. If it's pointing up the way, you're just going to be, you know, pointing up your nose. And if it's mm -hmm. pointing down at your chin, it's not going to, It's you need to get it right square on yeah. and less than an inch away from the microphone. Get that right first. Then get it as mm. loud as you can get it and then turn it down a little bit so that it doesn't feed back. Yeah. And you want you want the the frequencies to be balanced so that there's no piercing, you know, pops or you know, roll off yeah. some low end frequencies to stop the the horrible. <laughs> um, and if there's any like high tinny frequencies, you can roll them back so that the frequencies that are coming out are nice and balanced and loud. Yep. And then you can build the band around that sound. If you do the opposite, you'll turn all the guitars up really loud with the drum kit, and then when you go to add the vocals in. You can't push it any louder because it starts to feedback. So if you start from the the vocals, you'll get the sound of the band right. And it goes it, the go, same goes for ac the actual music itself. You should always build your band around the lead. The most important part of your band is the vocalist. Um, the sa it's the same in Eriska. Like the the most important part of our music is the tune, the melody. Yeah, that's the thing with the. That's the thing with the lead. That's the, the mm. everything else is is building up and supporting that melody, that 
tune, that lyric, whatever it happens to be. And uh-huh. if you're getting in the way of it, if you can't hear it, you're messing with the message of the song. So always yep. keep that in mind. Um, and this, the same goes for when you're recording. Um, when, and the opposite sort of way of thinking about it is um, when you're uh, tracking, when you're recording, you know, playing drums, bass, guitar, whatever, it is always best to have some sort of vocal guide to be playing along with because you've got to keep some context. You're you're the backup for that singer. You're, you're, your part is just there to give a, f- a frame of reference for the for the singer to to put their thing on top, you know it's it's the it's the message it's the poem it's the melody it's whatever it happens to be, so you have to have that in context all the time. You can't record anything without that lead context, otherwise it's it, when you go to slot it in it might not make sense. So, it, I always find as a drummer I always like to have the lead vocals up really loud. Um, mm, in my headphone yeah. mix or in my monitor mix, you know, so that I can feel the song. Uh, I don't know if it's the same for you, Julian. Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. For me, the most important things are drums, vocals, as a bass player. Anyway, yeah. I want to be able to hear the drums at least the at least the one and uh, at least the kick and the snare. You know, everything else is yep. it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kick and snare. And and oh, I not my microphone. Uh, just uh, yeah, just really nice, crisp, clear vocals, you know. Yeah. And then it, obviously, if I'm doing some some backing vocals as well, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a I don't know a rhythm guitar, something that gives me a harmony to go off of. Yeah, you know, so that, so I can find notes and I know where I'm where I'm going, kind of a thing. But yeah, I'm I'm. Yeah, I'm with you on on all of that. It's it's like Makes sense. it's even even in classical music. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think of like a a concerto, um, mm-hmm. the lead, but the the say it's a piano concerto or whatever it happens to be, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the rest of the band is just providing a sort of bed yeah. of sound for the soloist to. To sit there, the soloist on its own wouldn't make much this much sense. I mean, there there are some contexts where a, just a single soloist with nothing else is a is a cool creative thing. Mm-hmm. But it's like having a cheeseburger with no bun, no lettuce. It's just having just having the meat. You know, you need to have all yeah, your no cheese, cheese. Oh, no it's cheese, a cheeseburger nothing. without cheese. Yeah, just just have. <laughs> it's not a burger anymore. It's yeah, something else. Yeah. So basically. the the main event is the beef, right? If you're yeah. well, if you're. Vegetarian, know, then you, you, the actual <laughs> patty is the main event, but there's no main event without the cheese and the lettuce and the, everything else. Yeah. Um. So it needs to be it needs to be done with with context. If a if a chef is baking a cake or making a dish, without without tasting like mm-hmm. the t- steps along the way of knowing how it's going to taste when it's finishing up, if they, if they just independently taste each ingredient without tasting the whole thing, it could be a t- total mess. Just mm-hmm. a whole, beige grey mess um, yeah it's like painting a picture you know you, you're you trying to create something an overall thing yeah you're not just going to randomly do it you have to think things through yeah, um, yeah. so I, we were talking about this slightly before mm-hmm. we started recording uh, when playing live it is vitally important that you can hear yourself otherwise your tuning can be all over the place oh yeah yeah, so, 100%. <clears throat> the amount of uh, times I've seen vocalists, oh, I can't hear myself, can't hear myself. Um, and it will always end in disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, vocalists who can't hear themselves, um, if they can't hear themselves, they, they just, it's just never going to be good. It's yeah. never been a good They're not good. doing it out of nar- narcissism or anything like that. It's just they <clears throat> genuinely need to be able to hear themselves. Well, yeah, because as soon as you lose that uh, sense, anything can happen. Yep. You know, like I've not really had that problem performing because I've not had to hook up into anything. I've always performed with, you know, basically acoustic instruments, you know, like yeah. orchestras or, or with choirs, you know, backing me. They they accommodate to me from that moment. Yeah. You've never had a 4 by 12 Marshall cab sitting right behind you at <laughs> 10. <laughs> no, right, exactly. I've not yeah. had, you know, everybody who's like plugged in and there's a certain amount of sound already coming out. They, yep. they can only adjust so much. So, uh, yeah, I... 
right, it is important because it's like I was saying to you the other day, I was recording and I couldn't really hear myself that well to the accompaniment. Mm -hmm. And I was a tiny, tiny bit sharp overall, right. just overall, because I was in tune with myself, which I know it sounds really silly, but I was in tune with myself, but not with the actual piano part because I <coughs> couldn't accommodate to it. Yeah. So... Yeah, you, that sort of stuff can happen. I'll give you an example of uh, recording vocals or ha a vocalist without context. Go and look at the uh, the video that Gal Gadot did of the all the celebrities singing Imagine. Oh. Now, the, each celebrity that sang in that video is singing in a different key because mm -hmm. they had oh. no frame of reference. Yeah. And then... Uh, I always forget the guy's name. The guy who does the keyboard stuff online, uh, the funny videos. Is it like Charles something. Uh, Charles Cornell. There um, you go. He did. He he made a an accompaniment to make the vocals like sound better, and it ties it all together and gives it context because he obviously he's changing keys in between it's every great. single take, and it actually kind of works. But that's what happens if you don't have context if you don't have the end yeah, product in, in, the, in mind uh -huh, it's like the weirdest like polytonal mm -hmm. thing of it's just like it just modulates mm -hmm. for up and down for no good reason whatsoever it's a mess. exactly you know there's a couple that are like in between mm -hmm. keys as well so there's one which is like you know like in between like c B double sharp and, and c it, yeah oh. it just <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Like I can sing a tiny bit sharp, but I don't know how to find an in-between note. Microphones. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really. Mm. Need to go to India. I think my problem is like yeah, I just I've learnt with like the piano, which does not change yep. really. Yeah. Especially when it's in tune. Obviously, it can go out of tune, but yeah. Yeah. So that that that's it. that's why it's so important to. You can be able to hear yourself and hear the chords, mm -hmm. um, and when you're when you're singing live, nine times out of ten, it'll be a, a monitor sitting in front of you. Yeah. Um, so you're open ear, and you're just getting your vocals f fed back to you off a, a, a speaker in front of you, mm -hmm. and if you're trying to listen to yourself coming out of the speaker, plus you've got two. 4 by 12 cabs with two guitars, a bass and a full drum kit right behind you over your shoulder, you're going to struggle. Um, that's why it's such a nightmare um, playing little venues in, in town because mm. the, the sound setup mm. is never going to be amazing, which is why we are going to do an episode, possibly the next episode, on stage monitoring, and uh, just monitoring in general and talking about in-ears versus uh, stage monitors. Um, I'm a bit of an advocate for in-ear monitors. The reason why is because it eliminates all that on-stage noise and you can have any mix you want in your headphones without any interference from external uh, at atmosphere noises like drum yeah. kicks and stuff. Plus, if you want to be one of those guys, you can you can get a wee click track on the go if you want to play with like other like electronic yeah. uh, things as well. If you've got in-ears, you can set all that yep. up. It just gives you a, a lot of people. Uh, yeah, More we options. should do an episode on click tracks because I've heard so many people go, "I hate click tracks. It, is, it makes me sound like I'm I'm like a robot, and I don't like it. I, I hate it, and I don't like it." And it's it's like, funny because okay. we we call it click tracks. I had um I had a string quintet in once and asked them if they wanted a click track. And they're like, "What is a click track? What's a click track?" And I was like, "Oh, a metronome." And they're like. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can do that! That's amazing! I was like, yes, yeah, so it's an electronic metronome mm -hmm. in the computer. Because obviously they, t t t t they're, they're used to that sitting on the top of their piano at home. Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you can get a, an electronic version. Oh, that's, that's ingenious. Like, I didn't know you could get that. Like, oh, yes, cute. it's, it's, um, that's really it's nice. a digital metronome or a click track. Because it's sick. Yeah. I think it's good to use them. To be fair, they were retired. Cringe! They were they were little old. <laughs> they were old they ladies. were older women. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, right, it was okay. cute. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll uh, yeah I'll let that I'll let that slide. Be yeah. cringy if I said that. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> that would oh, be cringe. To be fair, to to be fair, you know, I went to uh, I went to a college where there was a lot of classical musicians, and there was probably a couple of people who were like, "Click tracks? What?" <laughs> they were what? in their twenties. Classical musicians get yeah. so much bad rep. 
It's a shame because I like I would say yeah I am but I'm also just a musician like I'm a classically trained musician is what I would say. It's the equivalent of a guitarist turning well, up with six tuning forks. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dung. <laughs> oh, let me just <laughs> imagine. imagine. Yeah. Oh jeez. I I, I kind of want to get some tuning forks just just to, for the banter. I've got an E four forty in the house. Just do that. Great. Just do that. Just to. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. No, I'm sorry. I only tune in A four thirty two. No, get out. Right. So the, the last section I've got here is vocal equipment. So mm. occasionally, um, I'll get some folk in the studio who like to use their own microphones, um, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, if you're a vocalist and you're taking it seriously and you're in your band, uh, yeah. you might want to go and buy yourself a a nice uh, live microphone. Mm. I would rec- yeah. I would recommend something um, dynamic, a dynamic yeah. microphone, um, because something that there looks something like that. that looks like that. Okay. Uh, the reason being is because in a live performance you're jumping around, moving around, lots of equipment, lots of people bustling mm-hmm. around. If you drop a dynamic microphone on the floor, it won't break. It's highly unlikely. No, this thing is like it's this thing's solid. Yeah, like it's That's not good. Breaking. The the components that make up a dynamic are really robust. Um, the the typical dynamic mic that you see people with is the the good old fashioned Shure SM58, which is yeah basically uh-huh. is the flagship vocal live vocal mic that yeah. every other vocal mic is based around. Um, so you've got the you've got the just the standard Shure SM58. You also have the SM58S which comes with a switch, an on-off switch. You also get the Beta 58, which is a slight upgrade, uh, slightly more expensive. It's got a slightly nicer sound, and it's still a dynamic. Um, I, you, Julian's probably going to tell you what price they are if he's Googling it. I think the yeah, SM58 is around can, £70, pounds, £80, sure. pounds, something like that. SM58. Yeah. Um, let me just... Shopping. Uh, it's about 85 yep. Pounds. The beta, um, the beta fifty is a little bit more expensive, I think, uh, but it's a higher quality mic. Uh, you get some other brands like Sennheiser and yeah, the, the beta is about one hundred and thirty-two. Yeah, good. That's a really good and microphone. There's a there's a sure beta fifty-eight A, which looks a little different, and it's one hundred and fifty-two. Right. Um. So, but yeah, the one I have uh, is it's an AKG something. And it's fine. Yeah. Um, and it cost me, it's an AKG uh, D5, and that cost about 57 right. quid. Right. Um, so, still fine. So if you're going to, if you're going to buy yourself a live vocal mic and use it live, make sure you get a fairly decent one, one that will sound good uh, and it's mm. tried and tested. Uh, I would always say yeah. SM58, you can't really go wrong. Um, no. Yeah, and it's like a if you if you like turn up P base exactly yeah. if you turn up to a gig and say oh I've got my own mic I've got an SM58 the engineer will probably go oh yeah okay that's fine because especially now with like COVID and things you don't really want to be using a microphone that seventy five thousand other people have used you and it's not. and it's like all bashed and orange coloured just disgusting just lips touching it yeah like beer. Like mm, spraying yeah. out of people's mm. mouths. Mm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they're gross, absolutely gross. Uh, so <clears throat> lovely. It, but if a sound engineer is like, uh, I, w- I would prefer if you use my microphones, um, especially live. Uh, I would say ninety percent of the time you should oblige, because if you turn up with something that is like a forty pound Argos, you know. Tesco value, yeah. Um, you're probably going to have, you know, struggle, and you're going to waste some time, you know, yeah. setting up your mm. mic, and it might not sound very good, and you'd probably be just better off doing what the the, yeah. the engineer says. But yeah. if you've yeah. got a standard mic like an SM58 or a Beta 50 mm. or something that's like, the the the, the engineer will probably yeah. go, oh yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah, I was gonna say you can you can buy SM fifty eight. What you could do, I mean, obviously, you know, pandemic, so a little bit different. But you can buy them secondhand for like forty pounds. Yep. 
fifty pounds. And if it's if it's a little bashed in, you can just you know buy a replacement like casing yeah. and just yeah. twist it off, Easy. slap on a new one. So because fun. the innards will all be working fine, you yeah. know. So yeah, totally. That's good. Um, yeah, no SM58, no. solid choice. Um, don't don't use what we're using in the studio for. That's what I was going to come to vocals. Um, yeah. If you if you're the only time I would say you could use a condenser microphone is if you're rich or sing, <laughs> singing singing <laughs> um, in a band that. Uh, it's not the same type of environment. If you're like in the basement of nice and sleazy in Glasgow, and there's beer being spilt everywhere, and people jumping about, and it's it's all crazy, and it's a small stage, and people might knock over your microphone, mm. just get a dynamic. But if you're singing in a nice, um, I don't know, charity dinner, and you're singing the lead singer of a a 1940s style jazz b- big band, and you've got your your all white suit on and it's all like flashy. <laughs> Sometimes uh, a condenser mic, um, you can get a handheld condenser mic, is actually really, really nice because it, it obviously it captures all the higher frequencies in your voice. Right. Um, and, yeah. you're, and there's not going to be that much feedback because every other instrument is acoustic apart from the piano and the bass and the guitar. Whereas all, all the brass yeah. and everything is, is largely all going to be acoustic. So you're not competing as heavily because when you're competing against someone with a Gibson Les Paul and a Marshall stack, yeah, yeah it's not the same as uh, a couple of saxophones. <laughs> Basically, mm-hmm. the mic applies to different needs. Yeah, different exactly. Different settings. Um, I would never suggest that you go out and buy a condenser mic if you're in a punk band. Just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it would last yeah. a gig and you would break it. And if you, uh, if you drop a condenser microphone, it will break. Oh. I mean, at the same time as well, like feel free to... Um, I don't know, uh, especially if you're doing something like punk or something a little bit more experimental, you know. It's good to go for, like, the tried and true classics, but feel free to experiment if with you're other types of mics. If you're rich, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, I don't know. Uh, you could, uh, I was thinking, I don't know how it would sound, but if you got, like, a bass drum mic and started shouting into that, it might sound uh, interesting. I know a band who did that. Uh, Tesseract. Oh, right, okay. The metal band. Oh, right, okay. Uh, do their growl vocals on an AKG, either the D12 or the D112. It's a bass drum microphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, yeah, that works. And you can literally kick that around like a football and it doesn't break. <laughs> uh, for the studio, nice. I've had this as well, where vocalists say, oh, I'm coming into the studio to record. Uh, can I bring my vocal mic? I, I will 99% of the time say no because it's never going to be as nice as this, the mics I have here. But if they come yeah. in and they say, well, oh, I've got a, a Telefunken, you know, or an, a, a Neumann U87 or U67, then, well, yeah, okay, <laughs> you can bring it in by all means. Um, but if it's, a, yeah. if it's a, I don't know, some cheap yeah. Chinese, you know, <laughs> 30 quid condenser mic, yeah. no. Just you can also, um, but uh, because you you're mostly digital, you can actually emulate quite a lot of microphones, can't you? Well, yeah, the microphones that we're using just now for the podcast are um, they're um, linear mics, which uh, you can superimpose the sound of expensive twenty thousand pound tube mics. And to be honest, like you can't really tell the difference. It's like ninety eight, ninety nine percent the same, and it didn't cost twenty thousand pounds. So yeah. If you if you want to really buy uh, a studio microphone, I recommend the Slate ML1. Uh, retails for roughly five hundred pounds. If you're willing to spend that amount, um, obviously I, I run a studio, so it seems like a pretty decent microphone for me. I've got two, because why not? Um, mm. So moving on to the last part of vocal equipment. <clears throat> Vocal effects. Sometimes I see bands do this, sometimes not. Sometimes people like to keep it simple and they just have a simple vocal mic and they let their sound engineer do all the other stuff. But you can buy multi-effects pedals, like a guitar oh, kind of set up. And you can have delay, reverb, distortion mm. on your mm. pedal board. And you plug yeah. your, mi- your microphone into the pedal board and say there's certain passages in your song that you have recorded mm. that in the bridge... 
I have a vocal setting where it's like got delay and, and distortion. You can just mm. kick a pedal and mm. it does that to your vocals and then kick it off again. I've seen some people yeah. do that. It's you've really just, cool. Yeah, you've just reminded me of, um, so we used to have, in the wedding band, we used to have a vocal effects pedal, but uh, Gilbert ended up selling it. But the, the, the best part, it, it was okay. It was a pretty decent, you know, it was a pretty decent pedal. But the best part about it was it had a Barry White simulator. <laughs> oh, wow. Just an octopus. <laughs> it was love literally, it. that's just all it was called. It was just, the setting was just called Barry White. Oh my gosh, So you just stick that. it on and it's like proper, like you, you, you know, like it just sh pitches your, shifts your voice down like, I don't know, like two octaves or something. Nice. So, uh, and you just end up sounding really, really silly. That sounds like oh, something yeah. I need to buy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> why not i mean life's well, too short yeah it, we were we were we were saying like oh we're we're actually doing some more like you know we're actually thinking about doing some barry white stuff and we're like oh why did we sell that oh that effect yeah. pedal oh that would have been epic mm. <sighs> people would be like why is that why does that woman sound like barry white <laughs> it doesn't make sense <laughs> that's, that's so funny. funny oh i would love that i would pay and watch that so that kind of wraps up is there anything right taking away from this episode what can people do right now after listening to this episode if you're a vocalist what can they go home and do right now that will improve their their vocals in their band what can they do drink loads of water buy a keyboard <laughs> no. buy, buy, buy a keyboard buy a drink keyboard water. definitely but definitely just look up basic some basic online lessons in piano or something just to understand even just a small amount you know and just so you know where to play and just to do even just five fingers da -da 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 -da. that's enough for a warm up yep. to start off with you know eventually you can learn to do octaves but you'd need to learn how to be able to play it all smoothly that's it really learn how to sing scales mm. if you learn how to sing scales it could really change a lot and and that means all scales and the next gig you do don't drink any alcohol before the gig yeah definitely and warm not. up definitely warm up and be as relaxed as possible and also what you can do to the extent you can is you can hire agustina as your vocal tutor <laughs> uh, so if people if people want to check yeah. out your stuff where yeah. can they find you and if you're on youtube or whatever? um well i have a youtube channel called agopom music if you want to follow that um also i have a facebook page which is agostina pombo soprano and an instagram page under the same name agostina pombo soprano where i'm uploading at the moment i'm uploading cover songs you know videos where i'm just playing playing covers is you know together while singing that's something i've yep. just started mm. doing mostly two tracks at the moment just because of yeah. covid no, she... i would prefer right. to play along with people more hopefully yeah. when it gets better i'll find i i prefer i'm more of a live performance kind of person yeah than uh sitting down trying to record i get, I get quite nervy so yeah <laughs> i'm looking forward for everything to start getting better for sure cool so that pretty much wraps up. If there's anything yeah. else you wanted to cover, nope. I think those no. are the most important things: keyboards yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah, drink, drinking a lot of even just hot water is good. Not obviously burning, but like you know, boil some water, let it cool a little bit, drink that. Get some chamomile. You can what chamomile. About, what about tea? Tea is great. Tea is fine. Um, tea Tennis. and honey <laughs> is really good if you like that. Um, I would say go for softer, more like herbal teas. Black tea's fine, but it, don't have it with milk. Mm, yeah. You know, you have to yeah. have plain kind of teas. So um, that's um, yeah. that is pretty much all the sort of standard instruments that you'll find in a in a sort of poppy, rocky band. Yeah. So that's that's the we've done drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, and vocals. Um, if there are any more in future, we're gonna we're gonna move on from the instrumental stuff and go back to just one off episodes. But if there's any others that you you want us to cover in future, I don't know, like uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, some Indonesian obscure instrument. If you know someone who can play it, <laughs> um, people might talk about it, like yeah. keyboard or something. 
stuff. Woodwind instruments, maybe? Woodwind, yeah, Perhaps, like how yeah. to amplify them the best way without making them sound horrible. Or just horrible. wind instruments, whatever. Yeah. So next week, I think we're going to cover the monitoring um how to like what mon what options you have for monitoring you know in ears or external yeah. or whatever I think we're going to cover that that's a pretty good topic so stay tuned for that and again once once again if you're enjoying the podcast please leave us a review rating on wherever you happen to listen to it and follow us on yeah. social media we are level up your band on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and a website um, and if you um want to get our recommendations on affordable gear we have an affordable gear list pdf download on our website uh, levelupyourband.com you can sign up for free and get mm -hmm. free downloadable pdfs we'll be releasing uh, multiple uh, downloadables over the course of time and you can download them all there for free um if you have any podcast episode suggestions Feel free to yeah, send, us, touch. send us a message. And as always, I uh, hope you all have a good week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.